File Manager and Collector is a multifunctional new UI tool that we've added in version 8. Open it up and you'll see all the external assets and file paths inside your current hip file. You can instantly tell what files exist and what files are missing from the project. You can open existing locations, jump to nodes and make changes within a couple of clicks. The main use of the file manage half of this tool is to allow you to efficiently make mass changes to file paths inside of your hip file. In this example, I've moved the caches from one folder to another folder and I'm going to relink them now. So I'm finding them, selecting them, and then I'm going to go right click and replace. First off, I'm going to isolate the part of the path I want to keep by splitting off the last few folders that I want. Then I'm going to go over here and click save state. You can go back to any prior state by double clicking on it. Uh, you can also discard any changes that you've made by closing the window. Next, I'm going to insert the new path at the beginning. Finally, all we need to do is set the parameters and that's all done. Inside of File Manager, click on Hip Collect and you'll be presented with the Collect Template. This is essentially instructions for the folder structure of your collected project. I'm going to be using a preset which I created prior, which namely adds three parent folders instead of zero for files that aren't sequences and it excludes my Arnold install directory so we don't collect any assets from this location. Next we're going to filter out the files that we don't want to collect, just deselect the ones that you don't want to be collected. The directories that we blacklisted in the template will be applied here and any files that don't exist will be filtered out in the next stage so you don't need to worry about that. Next we have a preview of our collected files folder structure which you can review and change to your preference. Finally in the top left you can click the collect files button which will start collecting your project. Make sure this is an empty directory to avoid any unwanted overwrites. Now it's wrapped up, all our assets and files have been moved into your new $hip directory and all necessary parameters have been changed. Deep Copy allows you to copy and paste all dependencies of your selected nodes such as materials, object merges, parameter references, etc, etc. In this example, I'm going to be selecting a single ROP and you'll see how we collect all our dependencies into the list. Initially, when we load Deep Copy, we're going to see all the current selections dependencies. From here, I'm going to select all of these and check if they have any dependencies of their own. All children of these nodes will be copied over, so for readability, I'm going to remove them. Next, we've got some material dependencies that are assigned to our assets. And finally, I'm going to add the camera's input nodes, which aren't considered dependencies, but in certain cases, you may want to add them, like here where our camera's position is dependent on these nulls. You can make changes to file paths here as well, which will be performed during the copy. So your current path will stay the same unless you click the rename parameters now button. So from this single copy, we've got all our dependencies and when we paste them, they'll go into the appropriate networks. So now we're going to go and paste these. So I'm going to open up an empty hip file, go into an appropriate network, which in our case is a driver network. So I'm going to go into out, click and paste this. And you can see that all the references are going to be in our scene now. And you can also see that our conflicts have been updated. So if you were to paste again into the scene, we've got a number of different ways that we can resolve the uh, duplicate names and how we would actually paste into these uh, nodes if we didn't overwrite them outright. This is something where when nodes are too closely bunched together and you can't read the name, for example, you can use Control Alt Scroll to separate the nodes or bring them closer together. You can do this vertically on Y if you use Control Shift and scroll. And here's it handling a bigger network. Camera Morph is a quick way to combine camera motions. The interpolation options include Blend, which is a simple linear blend between all cameras in the node. Keyframe Overlap blends between the final keyframe of the current camera and the first keyframe of the following camera. You can set the keyframe overlap in and out frames in the camera section. By default, guess mode is checked, which guesses the start and end frames by looking for the first and last keyframe of the camera and all its parented nodes. Morph parameters are the parameters that you want to morph between in addition to the camera's transformation. Consistent parameters will be taken from the first camera's input. You can also add a focus object, a feature that all regular cameras have when access tools is installed. Along with that, you can add a look at object and add some additional chop operators to smooth out motion if necessary. 
A feature currently supported by Arnold and Redshift shaders is adding an AOV directly to one or more ROPs. You can do this a number of ways, but the easiest is to right click on a Material Builder node and click Add to ROP. All AOVs that are connected to the materials output will be added to the ROPs that you select. AOV Loader has been reworked to allow for easier use as part of a team. You can load and save AOVs to a JSON file and your team can pick them up to ensure no passes are forgotten. It currently supports Mantra, Redshift and Arnold. To save a set of AOVs, simply select an appropriate ROP, type the name in and click enter. To load an AOV, you can click on one of the two buttons at the bottom of the window. The right button adds to your existing AOVs, the left one replaces the entire list. You can also add specific AOVs from the list. Drag and drop was previously broken in earlier builds of Houdini 18. We had a workaround which was an overlay, but luckily in later builds the bug has been addressed as of 18.0.597 and onwards. You can use the features as intended. Just to uh, refresh your memory, you can just drag in, for example, some geometry into object or salt level, and it will lay it out nicely, name it properly. Uh, and we've also added some new features as well. So prior, you could merge in regular hip files by holding shift while you uh, drag your hip file over. And then you'll be able to see all your node tree but it was limited to full FX files. Uh, now you can drag in hip NC files uh, and hip LC files as well. Uh, and another feature we've added to merge is, um, for example, if I drag in a full hip file, I'm going to load in. Uh, you can merge into a, a particular network. So before you could merge and it would uh, load you know, the path as it was, and you've got everything in here. But what if I wanted, what if I was already in a network quite deep somewhere, maybe I was in a subnet and a geometry node, you can right click, select children, click here on merge and selected network, and it will merge your big network into this node now and center it on your mouse as well. Uh, you can also merge in multiple networks and I'll lay them out properly. So I'm going to select these two, select children, and then merge. And there we've got a far more simpler node tree. This is uh, Fairy Lights, and then this is Geo1. Another addition is the uh, ability to uh, drag in uh, Arnold Material X nodes, um, which are basically saved Arnold materials. So you go in here and you have your material network. Uh, I'll load in this one like that. And then we also have the ability to drag in multiple into, you know, an existing uh, Arnold material builder, like so. Vex Manager is a UI solution to saving and loading snippets and functions. It utilizes Houdini's built-in preset system inside of Wrangles and adds to this menu. So by default, when you load up Vex Manager, you're in snippet mode which allows you to save your current Wrangles code to a category. As soon as you save the snippet, it will be available in the Wrangles menu where you can load it, or you can control click on the preset inside of the VEX manager. Next, we have function save mode, which you can access by clicking the button in the top right or by clicking the shortcut, which is tab. Function save allows you to save one or more functions to a .h extension file. The file doesn't have to currently exist, so we're just gonna create a blank one right now. Functions all must be prefixed with void. In this example, I'm saving two functions. Click save. We don't need to enter our name as we do in the snippet mode. The function name will be used instead. As with saving snippets, you can load the preset by control clicking, except this time we're importing the function and it also adds a line below displaying what variables the function expects. Ramp presets brings a personally missed feature that we had in Cinema 4D into Houdini, the ability to save, load and view ramps. We kind of got this feature in Houdini 18, but you can't preview the ramps before applying them, and as far as I'm aware, you can't expand the library either. Right-click on any ramp parameter and select Ramp Preset to load the UI. Right-clicking on a preset allows you to delete it. Left-clicking will apply the ramp.
You can also save and load spline ramps as well. Assignment now allows for multiple materials to be added to the list and automatically updates when any changes are made inside of the hip file, such as parameters changing, nodes being deleted, etc. It's also easier than ever to move objects to existing materials. Simply make your selection and, and shift drag your objects into the material. Assignments can also be made by dragging the node itself into the list. And of course you have all the pre-existing actions like assigning to a new material, replacing via the node tree and removing the assignment entirely. Material Assign now lets you load from Houdini's Material Gallery, which allows you to create and assign massive material networks in a couple of clicks. If you're unfamiliar, you can save to this gallery by right-clicking on a material builder, save, save to gallery, and then enter any additional details and click accept. Now inside of Material Assign, you can select it under the type and material palette option. Material Assign and Assignment both support four third-party render engines, which include Redshift, Arnold, V-Ray and Octane, along with the first party renderer Mantra. Extract has been reworked. You can now choose which object level network you drop your extract into. You can also drop into subnetworks to keep things more organized. The mode dropdown allows you to split string attributes into their unique components and the only create nulls button will split this attribute without extracting to geometry level. Something that I've been missing for a while in Houdini was a move up node uh, to command or, or tool, but um, it simply just moves the node up the tree like so. It takes into consideration other inputs so you're able to move, you know, vellum nodes and stuff about as well with ease um, and it will it will maintain inputs on certain nodes as well, so wrangles and whatnot. Renamer allows you to mass rename your node selection. You can order the rename by position, node name, or the length of the existing name. You can use dollar sign OG to include the original node name. You can use dollar sign followed by a number to iterate one every rename. Node path convert allows you to efficiently make parameter and references absolute or relative in a couple clicks. First, you select what type of path you want. Then you decide if you want to only change parameters with names matching the one that you right clicked on. And finally, you can choose whether you want to include the children of your current selection in the conversion. It works in pretty much any scenario that I could think of, so here's a few examples on screen. Similarly, you can also expand variables of your choice using file path convert. Next up, I'm going to be talking about the whip ROPs for daily production. The idea behind these ROPs is to produce files with meaningful file names uh, all in one place. So at any point if you need to revert back to a version, you can just look at the file name, know where the file is and what the camera was. First off, we've got Flipbook Whip, which simply creates an MP4, ProRes or GIF from your animation. I've used this tool so much during lockdown, it's actually unreal. The ability to save out a camera move uh, or animation as an MP4 for someone to review on Teams uh, would be such a pain to do without it. Um, next up, we have IPR Whip, which uses the same naming scheme. So what IPR Whip does is it saves the image buffer with all your post effects and whatnot from Redshift. Um, so what you see in your Redshift render view is what you're gonna get out. And we also have the ability to use just a standard Houdini render view as well. 